and I, I particularly enjoyed, you know, he focused on several areas such as crime and, and the COVID response and the budget and economic development, um, fish and bycatch issues, food security. I think we all are concerned in a lot of those areas. I particularly enjoyed that an election year is not an excuse for an action um, and that we can do this together. Um, I think they were all very solid messages. I enjoyed his, I envision, I think I identify with many of the things that he brought up. The key issue is that if you're going to do it together, you have to do it together. We either succeed together or we fail together. And I'm certainly hoping for more of a team effort this year where legislators spend a lot more time with the administration on trying to get some of those solutions across the finish line because I agree with the concept, but it's going to take a lot of hard work to, for those concepts to become deliverables. I'm gonna see who would like to say other things up here, kind of leave it up to all of you, Senator Stedman. Well, I'll go ahead and lead off. I think on the on the uh, some of the financial questions, clearly the financial position of the state has improved, um, but this current year uh, that ends in June the end of June, uh, we're going to have some excess revenue uh, from what we projected, but we had depleted our savings to the m absolute minimum amounts. And the Finance Committee is in dis early discussions about replenishing some of those accounts. The concern is what do we do in 2024, FY24, and where is the structural deficit um, that we're still dealing with? We've got a lot of federal money that's come in and it's hiding a lot of things and we're in the process of unraveling that. We expect to see roughly about a $400 million hole and we'll be running stress tests on oil prices in the from probably 50 on up to $70 or so to try to get a feel for where we're at. The concern is all of the revenue that appears to be um, potentially coming in the rest of this year and next year is already expensed in the submitted budgets. There's no replenishment of our liquidity position. And it would put the uh, next governor, if it's, if it's uh, Michael Dunleavy or somebody else in the next legislature, whoever that may be that returns in a very precarious position in 2024 budget. So we're gonna be looking forward for a couple of years and laying that out. But we are financially improving. The budgets are, as reflected by the governor, fairly flat uh, again. There's been some decreases in some areas and some increases in, in others. Public safety is one for an increase, um, but um, all in, um, we're just running horizontal pretty much. So there's also a lot of legislation that's in the hopper that is not factored in the budgets. Some of them have tens of millions of dollars in fiscal notes. So we need to be careful that we don't get too euphoric at $80 a barrel and end up making our position worse in a couple of years. So that's kind of um, in a, a, a quick synopsis. But we, um, we have been fortunate that we've got a lot of federal money coming in, but we still have some underlying issues we need to work on. Thank you, Senator. And, and it wasn't that quick, but I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Senator Stevens. Well, I, um, I have to say it was a very positive uh, speech. It was a very upbeat speech and uh, uh, looking forward, um, you know, I, I think we have to look back as well and see where we were three years ago when this governor really uh, decimated so much of the budget uh, that concerned me, the areas that I'm most interested in, K-12, University, and uh, Marine Highway. As you remember, his budget um, just uh, took a hatchet to all of those. And now uh, he seems to have changed entirely, and I, I appreciate that and applaud him for, for doing that. I hope it's more than just uh, election time, you know, politics, and that it's, uh, it should, should he be reelected, that he will, in fact, um, continue to support K-12 and the university and the Marine Highway. He didn't he actually didn't mention the Marine Highway at all, uh, and that's an important issue uh, to me. Uh, <laughs> but um, that was mostly federal money that, that came in, and, um, and we are looking at, um, at uh, fully funding the budget, though, where the money's coming from is a question, uh, but then the rebuilding or the building of the new Tustamina is moving ahead. So I'm very pleased about that. I think he's come a long way in terms of, as you recall, his first budget, uh, not only uh, uh, 
decimated several elements uh, of, of our budget, but also um, um, really uh, passed a lot of elements of the budget on to our local communities, to our cities and boroughs, and I'm pleased that that is not the case now. So again, I, I'm very pleased. It was a, a very positive speech, and, um, and, and as you mentioned, Mr. President, he did say a couple of times in, in very different ways that uh, this only works if we all work together, and I hope that is indication of, of a change in the relationship with the legislature. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Stevens. Senator Hughes? Thank you. Oh, it's good to breathe. <laughs> um, well, I'll just start out by saying I really love the fact that um, Governor Dunleavy uh, applauded the successes and the resilience of Alaskans. Um, he gave a lot of ex examples, and I think that was really important for all of us to hear because we've been through a real rough patch um, during the this uh, pandemic, the seemingly endless pandemic. So I, I, I said I think that set the stage for casting a vision. As far as solving the fiscal things, that's eluded us for six years. And um, I know I've been pushing for a solution for that time and the governor's right, we need to tackle it once and for all. Uh, the, the question is, will we come together as a team? As, as you all mentioned, um, we haven't seen the votes in the past. Um, will this inspire us to step up? I, I hope so. Um, like I said, for six years, we've needed to tackle it. And the people of Alaska expect us, it's our job, it's our job um, to solve the problem. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful that this will provide some inspiration in this building to really think about our job and realize that even an election year, you can get things done. Um, I'll just say a couple other points. Um, the revival of, of the gas line, a concept that's been dormant, um, that was intriguing. I'd, I'd like to learn more in the past that hasn't penciled out. So um, that'll be an interesting conversation. And then the People's First Initiative, um, I have been concerned during the six years where we haven't been solving the fiscal issues, some of the things have been shoved to the side. And domestic violence, sexual assault, um, the, the five things that he listed, those are all things I think that um, are, are very serious issues and um, it's time that we tackle them. So I look forward, I think that is something we can do uh, as a bipartisan effort. I think all four caucuses can understand that's, that's important work and we have a responsibility for the public safety. We have a responsibility to the victims. Uh, the through the one door concept is something I'd like to learn more about and how we can help that. And um, then lastly, just because I'm from the, the bread basket, uh, the governor's words about food security, um, you're going to be hearing more about that. Some of us are going to be announcing a, a new caucus focused around that um, coming up. So I, I do think that that is on the forefront of a lot of Alaskans' minds right now uh, with the different issues that have happened and seeing empty store shelves. We used to provide more than, we used to produce more than half uh, right here in state that we consumed and we're down to less than 5%. So I think that's an important focus. And I, I think it's one that uh, everyone in this mil building can embrace and work on. Thank you, Senator Hughes. Senator Costello. Thank you, Senator Machiki. Um, well, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, I thought the speech was incredibly optimistic. I loved that it focused on the people of Alaska. I really think that all of the initiatives were people centered all of the people that the governor mentioned by name, starting with our Olympic champion, Lydia Jacoby, they all overcame challenges. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a theme throughout the speech that just like all of the individuals he mentioned, including Miss America and also uh, Carly from the My House up in, in the Valley, um, the troopers, individual Alaskans who are victims of crime. You know, we've all overcome these challenges and we did it together on the repeal of Senate Bill 91. I was proud to have introduced that bill, but it really was a team effort bringing all of us together to come around and realize that uh, at the end of the day, you know, we, we might live in, in different zip codes, but our state is the same state and we, we can overcome these challenges. I think that the governor's right. We have a bright future. We are uh, enviable in terms of all the other states in the country. We have everything that we need to solve our problems. And um, 
I want to give the governor a, a high five for the speech tonight. I think he, he set the tone for the session. We know we had a, have a lot of work to do. We know that we don't always, you know, agree entirely on how to solve our problems, but I think we have options and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to a, to a, a productive session. Thank you, Senator. Senator Bishop. Thank you. And uh, I always like to wait till it was someone's phone who's going to buy us uh, at least six donuts tomorrow oh, morning. Okay, I apologize. I'm a little hard of hearing. I'm, I haven't even got started yet, and I'm already getting thanks. So I, 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 I like going last just so I don't. Now I saw what everybody said, and, and I'll cover a couple of things in the governor's speech that hasn't been covered. And those of you that know me, <clears throat> I was really, it, it was a long speech. I think it was his longest. I, I, somebody asked me, what'd you think of the speech? And I says, well, it probably took his folks two weeks to write it and I'm trying to unpack it in five seconds here. So um, uh, no dig on the governor's just an observation. There was a lot of information in there, right? And uh, we'll have to go home and, 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 and think about that. But the, th Two things that stood out for me, the whole speech, there was a lot of good points, but something that I have been, have been championing for, for years is he spoke about being a leader in renewables and including hydro. You want to put 80% of this state on a renewable resource Let's build Sioux sit in a dam. If you want to be a true leader in renewables, 80%, you have then put a generation of savings in people's pockets. That five year, 10 year, 20 year, 50 year vision that he talked about, that's the vision. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. So what questions do we have out there? We'll start with Peter who has his hand up in the back. But a lot of the things he talked about are going to require uh, considerable investment. So how how would you see kind of bridging that gap? Well, I'm going to go to a finance member first and then see what others have to say about that. So who would like to touch on that, <laughs> Senator? I have no idea. The, the budget has been flat for years. Efficiencies have been, you know, squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. If, the, if there was any low-hanging fruit, it would have been plucked off years ago. <coughs> we have, since the beginning of his administration, we've depleted, uh, according to the rough forecast of the end of 23, uh, about a billion, 900 million, out of the CBR. And for those that look at our cash position, that puts us at the minimum, not counting the 400 that was moved from the education trust that might be mo moving back hopefully so um that issue uh, will be uh, discussed at, at the finance table we've got to look beyond november we've got to look into 24 and 25 and we've got to position ourselves to not only pay a healthy dividend but to meet our obligations across the state for the uh, some of the objectives that the governor laid out tonight, some of the new ones with public safety. We've got a reading issue throughout the state. We're trying to solve that. That's going to cost tens of millions of dollars. Uh, so we've got some some expenditures, increased expenditures that are coming at us. Um, but as, as um, Senator Stevens said, there's been areas that have been decimated, the university, the Marine Highway and a few others that we need to make sure that they're functioning going forward. So I don't see any hands up, but I do, I do want to touch on, on something. Uh, there's a chicken and an egg problem that we have in Alaska. One of them is that we've had these financial issues that um, we've been unable to solve. And uh, I, I also remain hopeful that we are going to get there. I think it should be, if there's an election issue, it should be that one. We need to work together on a fiscal plan. But as we've pushed issues aside, obviously our number one uh, category of spend is Department of Health and Social Services. 
And that is a spend that is uh, the young lady that was there tonight um, kind of represented that corner. We're number one in, in uh, sexual abuse of minors. We're number one in sexual assault. We're number one in suicides and domestic violence and, and so many social problems that we've been unable to conquer. And all of those broken lives hit that category of spend. I mean, you, you, I, I think you have to find a balance. But what's critical is that we prioritize spending and fit those pieces in, into the pie. Without it, we're going to continue going downhill. We have a substantial proportion of broken lives in this state. And if we don't break the cycle, we will continue spending that money. So you have to fit it in as you as you put your fiscal plan together. There has to be a piece that's dedicated to solving some of those issues. And some of them are expensive. But in the long term, you're either going to have an ongoing cost that's increasing over time or at some point you're going to deal with those issues and bring the cost down substantially. So I, I appreciate the um, segments that were brought up about some of the public safety and broken life funding. Um, and I think it has to be a piece of that consideration. But you're right, it's, uh, it's a big puzzle. And you can't afford everything. We're going to have to prioritize to solve some of those problems. Senator Stevens, did you have... I just wanted to remind folks that, uh, and as we all know, there are enormous ups and downs in our economy. Every time we think the world is coming to an end, something happens. And, uh, for example, we've got uh, a great uh, increase in the volume of the uh, oil going through the pipeline, a great increase in the, in the dollar value of, of oil. The, the permanent fund has had uh, a very good year, and uh, but those things don't last forever, and uh, we need to be prepared, uh, as uh, Senator Stedman said, we decimated our savings, we need to put some money uh, back into savings. So just to remind people that there are these ups and downs, and... Um, you know, you just have to be careful about uh, spending every dollar we've got right now because we, we need to have some money in the future to, pr to, pr to uh, protect us. Other questions?